Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of major depressive disorder. So before we get into the signs and symptoms, let's talk briefly about what major depressive disorder is. Major depressive disorder, or MDD, is a psychological condition involving significant low or depressed mood that causes significant dysfunction. We're going to talk a bit more about this in detail later on in this lesson. So we first have to distinguish sadness or low mood. This could be something that happens in everyday life. So if something comes up in someone's life, perhaps bad news, this can cause the blues or some depression, as we would say colloquially. So sadness can be a very temporary phenomenon. We can also see it in cases where there is a death of a loved one, and this would be referred to as bereavement. But in this lesson, we're going to talk about a psychological condition that involves significant sadness that causes other issues and other signs and symptoms, and that is MDD or major depressive disorder. Now, the epidemiology of major depressive disorder reveals that it is a very common condition. Greater than 300 million people suffer from depression, and it's been estimated that approximately 7.6% of Americans suffer from depression, and females are more likely to suffer from depression. The female to male ratio is two to one, so for every one one male that suffers from depression, two females will suffer from depression. Now, the topic of this lesson is the signs and symptoms of major depressive disorder, and the following signs and symptoms are going to be adapted from the DSM-5 criteria, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So this is what is used to actually officially diagnose this condition. So now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of major depressive disorder. So all of the signs and symptoms are categorized by particular criteria. So the first one is criterion A. This is going to be the first set of signs and symptoms that can occur with major depressive disorder. Now, the following signs and symptoms are going to occur in the same two-week period. So all of these that we're going to talk about occur in that same two-week period. So the first one is a low or depressed mood. So Patients will often have feelings of sadness, emptiness, and hopelessness. And it occurs most of the day, nearly every day. So if we were to actually time and see how long someone's having a low or depressed mood, it's going to be most of the day, nearly every day in that 14-week period. Now, another related symptom is loss of interest or pleasure. So this is marked decreases in interest and pleasure in at least a majority of activities. So what a patient might have liked or enjoyed before, they don't have the interest in those activities anymore and they don't gain any pleasure from them anymore. And again, this is going to occur in at least the majority of activities. So almost all or all the activities they normally enjoy. And again, this is going to occur most of the day, nearly every day in that 14 week period. Now, irritability is also another related symptom. Now, this is going to be described as an irritable mood that can occur with or without depressed mood. And this irritability or this irritable mood is more likely to occur in children or in the elderly. So depression or major depressive disorder can present differently in children and elderly patients. Although it could present with a depressed mood, it can present with an irritable mood in these patients. Now, the reason I put all three of these together is because in order to actually go forward in saying that a patient has major depressive disorder, they must have at least one of these symptoms. So they must have a lower depressed mood or irritable mood, which would be considered one set of symptoms, and then a loss of interest or pleasure would be the other one. So they don't necessarily have to have a lower depressed mood, they could just have loss of interest or pleasure, and they may still have major depressive disorder. And I say may have major depressive disorder because we're going to need some other signs and symptoms that we're going to talk about later in order to actually say that they do have major depressive disorder. So one more important note to make here is that these symptoms can either be subjective or objective, which means that if they're subjective, they are experienced by the patient and the patient is reporting them subjectively. Whereas if they're objective, that means there's an observer that's seeing the patient and saying, yes, they have a depressed mood or loss of interest or pleasure or irritable mood. So this is going to be important when describing some of the other signs and symptoms we're going to talk about later. So I just wanted to mention that here. So there are more signs and symptoms that occur in this grouping we call criterion A. And I'm going to talk about why I keep them in this group later on. So another sign that can occur in major depressive disorder within criterion A is weight changes. 
So weight changes are going to be either significant loss of weight without changing diet or dieting or weight gain. So without actually trying, without any intervention, the patient is either losing or gaining weight. And the definition of weight change in this context is a change of more than 5% of weight in a month time. So that can be either weight loss or weight gain. There can also be sleep changes in major depressive disorder, and these can include either insomnia or hypersomnia. So insomnia is going to be difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or the patient is going to experience early morning awakening. So that would be considered insomnia. And then hypersomnia would be the opposite, patients sleeping a lot more than usual. So either of these can occur in patients with major depressive disorder. The patient can also have what we call motor functioning changes or psychomotor agitation or psychomotor changes. So these are going to be objective reports. Now, not simply the patient describing them, but it's actually going to be an observer that sees the patient and recognizes that the patient's either slower or slowed down the way they're moving or they're being restless. So this is going to be a case where an objective report is what is needed as opposed to a subjective report, which would be something that is described by the patient. Fatigue can also occur as well. This is going to be very common. Feeling tired and having low energy is going to be very common in major depressive disorder. And the fatigue occurs almost every day in the 14-day time period. So again, most of these are going to be something that occur majority of the time nearly every day during that 14-day time period. Some other symptoms that can occur in major depressive disorder include feeling guilty or worthless. So oftentimes it's going to be excessive or inappropriate guilt. And in fact, they may have a false belief as to why they are guilty. So they could have some delusional guilt where there's this fixed false belief that they're believing that is not necessarily true, but it's something that's causing them to feel very, very guilty. And again, this is going to occur nearly every day for those 14 days. So feeling guilty or worthless majority of the time, nearly every day during that 14 day time period. Decreased concentration can also occur as well. This is essentially a decreased ability to think and concentrate. They're gonna feel very slow and sluggish. And they may also have increased indecisiveness. So trying to decide on something may be very difficult for these patients. And again, this is going to occur nearly every day. And then finally, patients with major depressive disorder are at an increased risk for having suicidal ideation. So this is also going to be a symptom of major depressive disorder. So criterion A contained all those signs and symptoms. Those are going to be the signs and symptoms of major depressive disorder. But in order to officially say that a patient has major depressive disorder, they have to have at least five of those previous symptoms. So they have to have at least five of those. And at least one of them has to be either a low or depressed mood, which could also be an irritable mood, again, occurring in children or the elderly, or they need loss of interest or pleasure. So either they have low depressed or irritable mood, or they have loss of interest or pleasure. So one of those has to be present. And then they have to have at least four other ones in order to say that they have the diagnosis of major depressive disorder. And again, all of these are going to be present during the same two week time period. And a way to remember these signs and symptoms of major depressive disorder is by the mnemonic MCG caps. So M stands for mood that's low, S for sleep disturbance, I for interest loss, G for guilt, E for energy low or energy loss, C for concentration decreased, A for appetite change, which would stand for weight loss or weight gain, P for psychomotor changes, which would be those motor functioning issues that we talked about before, being very slowed down or being restless, and then S for suicidality. So again, they have to have at least one of or both low, depressed, irritable mood, or loss of interest or pleasure. And they also have to have at least four of these other ones that we talked about. So they have to have at least five of these, all present most of the day, nearly every day in the same two-week time period in order to say that they meet criteria A for major depressive disorder. Now, that's not all that is needed to actually make an official diagnosis of major depressive disorder. Those are going to be the classic signs and symptoms of major depressive disorder. But there are other criteria that need to be met. Criterion B is required, and this states that the symptoms that we talked about before, those criterion A symptoms, are severe enough to cause significant distress or impairment in a variety of life domains, including social relationships, work life, 
and other important areas of life. So all those symptoms that we talked about before, they have to have at least five of those again, but they have to be significant enough to cause significant impairment in someone's life. So they may cause the patient to miss work or lose some relationships or lead to some other issues in their life financially. Those types of scenarios are going to be enough to say this is going to be severe enough to cause a significant issue in someone's life. So that is what criterion B is. So it has to be met as well. Criterion C is essentially an exclusion criteria. Symptoms are not due to other causes, including the effects of a substance, medication, or other medical condition. So if there's some medication the patient is taking that's causing all these symptoms, and they even meet criterion B, but it's the medication, it's not the condition of major depressive disorder, it is the medication or the substance that they're using. Or it could be a physical medical condition that is causing all these symptoms. So that also has to be met as well in order to say that this is major depressive disorder. Criterion D states that these signs and symptoms are not better explained by schizophrenia or related psychiatric conditions like schizophreniform or schizoaffective disorder. So some of these other conditions may present with some of these signs and symptoms we talked about here. So if it is, for instance, schizoaffective disorder, it's not going to be major depressive disorder. It's going to be schizoaffective disorder causing these signs and symptoms. And then finally, criterion E has to be met, which means that these signs and symptoms are not due to bipolar disorder. So patients with bipolar disorder, either type 1 or type 2, can have these signs and symptoms when they're in their depressed state. But if they have bipolar disorder, they're also going to have manic or hypomanic episodes along with those depressed episodes. So in order for criterion E to be met, the patient should not have had manic or hypomanic episodes in the past. If they have, this is going to be bipolar disorder, either type 1 or type 2, depending on if they've had manic or hypomanic episode. So as you can see, in order to actually have an official diagnosis of major depressive disorder, we not only need those signs and symptoms that we talked about before, but we also need to have these other criteria to be met as well. So if you want to learn more about major depressive disorder, including risk factors and how it's treated, please check out my full lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.